now that we've created the data vault and the business data vault constructs we're going to go ahead and actually look at the data mart process so the first thing you need to do to build the data mart is you need to create the views that you need to load the data mart and all of those views the code for the views are attached in the documentation um, but have a, let's have a look, quick look at just how would you build a view for a fact in a dimension table so let's look at the, the fact table it's probably the more complex one of the lot um, the first thing you need to do is again you decide with um, where you're going to start so in this case i'm going to start with the point in time table so you always start in your from close with your primary point in time table now i could have used the sales order line here first but i'm going to start with the sales order you join the point in time table to the bridge table on the key, on the sort of surrogate key and then you would join the point in time table to its satellite okay and then you would join the, the rest of the point in time tables to the bridge and so forth and so down so here i'm joining the customer the address and uh, the address again for the ship to address and build to address and the reason we're joining these point in time tables is because we need to get the business keys back for those so we need these business keys back from the point in time tables to be able to hook them up to the dimensions but that is just a, a pattern here uh, feel free to look at it um, we cover this off into in our uh, more advanced training sessions here so what i've done here is i've created the views for the sales order uh, the customer, um, the address, and the product here. So once we've created all these views, we run them into our um, data vault, and we'll have the views sitting over here in our data vault. We will have all of the views. Um, so if I refresh this, I've run them in here, and now what I need to do is actually get that metadata into Bimbleflex. And to do that, I'll head over to the Bimbleflex app, and I'll select I'll go to the projects and I'll select the data mart project here because I'm going to load data from the data vault into the data mart. I'm going to hit the import metadata button and I have split this up into two separate um, schemas here. So I actually want everything, I want all of these views from my DBO schema um, and I'm going to unselect these two columns here. They're not really relevant, but we're going to unselect those. And if you've created your views where the first column in the view is also the key of the view, remember when we import views, we, we do not have access to all the primary keys because views just obviously don't have primary keys and foreign keys and references. But if we have that, what we can do is if you've put it, your key in the first column, you can select this first column button here and hit import metadata. This is now gonna bring all of the view metadata into Bimbleflex. So let's have a look at what they look like. So again, if we go to the datamart project here, we'll see now that we have these views and if I look at the views like the customer view here you'll see that on the first column I've got the primary key integration key and the rest of the columns will all be there um, again if we look at uh, things like sorry I'll go back to the project here look at that and then if you look at the you know the, the sales order um, the one thing you probably want to know or do is you want to give these column names the right names uh, for your dimensions and your facts so spend a little bit of time working in your views and your facts here to make sure that the columns that's returned as metadata into Bimbleflex is actually what you want it to be so now let's go ahead here and actually um, look at um, building out some facts and dimensions so we're going to always start off it's probably best to start off with a dimension so the first one i'm going to do is start off with the with the very top one here the address hit the clone button here and then type in this target schema here of DIM. So I'm going to put my uh, dimensions in a schema called DIM. I'm going to take it out of there, change the target object type here to dimension, and then I want to add an identity column here of address key. So target schema, address, dimension, and then just hit save. So I'll go back to the projects, and what you will need to do here is go there, and if you, again, if um, you may need to go ahead here and just reload hit reload and get your um, dimension back in here. So now I've put my dim address there. Okay, the next thing you also see here is if I go back to address, you'll see if I just go to any one of these columns, you'll see that it's got the target table and target column. So that the clone um, button there, what it does is it takes the metadata of the object that you are cloning, creates a target object and creates mappings between the source and the target. So what we now effectively, just by clicking that clone button, we have now created the lineage to load that view and put it into the dimension. So let me go ahead and just very quickly do, do the rest of them. I'm gonna go ahead here and go to customer and I'm gonna do clone the same. I'm gonna go through the same process here of just going dim, taking that out, changing this to dimension 
and identity column and leave that as it is hit save and then again the same with project clone go ahead and do dim go project here and dimension add identity product I need good now now that I've created my three dimensions I want to also create my fact table and again we're going to do a little bit more things here so I'm going to go ahead on the fact table and hit clone and I'm going to put this in the fact schema and take this away and go fact and I'm not going to add an identity column you can if you want um, but identity columns on fact tables um, doesn't really mean a lot but so you can add one if you want add one I'm not going to do one in the walkthrough hit save and what this is going to do is create the fact table for me so what I'm going to do now is actually go and hit the refresh metadata button to if again if I go to project here I will now have my dimensions and facts here and I'll have my tables here and the lineage will be already inputted for me the next thing that I want to do is obviously create the relationships between the fact the product and the address so there has to be a relationship where I need to create the you know the, the star schema so the easiest way to do that is to go ahead here and go into my star schema here and I'm gonna go and grab my data mart and I'm gonna grab all of them over here I'm gonna grab all of them over, over here and I'm actually gonna go and show my columns because I'm gonna do some uh, modeling here I'll hit the refresh button here and um, just for the sake of actually making it look like a star schema I'll move things around a little bit here so now what we need to do is we need to connect the fact up to the customer address twice actually and the product here now as you can see here in the fact sales order I have the customer BK so this customer business key or the key from the customer needs to be connected to the dimension here and then so what we can do is I'm gonna go and add a reference here now if I add a reference between the fact sales order and the customer it comes up with a dialogue and what this dialogue t is telling you is that the customer business key is going to be mapped to the customer key and then it's going to rename the source column to customer key so effectively what it needs to do is it needs to change the data type of this to the customer key because we want the surrogate key in the fact but behind the scenes Bimmel Flex have retained the metadata and the knowledge to know that actually I'm getting a business key that needs to look up a surrogate key and return the surrogate key to the fact so I'll do exactly the same here for the product BK add a reference between this and that and it's going to say the same thing then the build to address reference between this and address say so okay and as you see here as I've added this reference here it calls this one address key here I actually want to go and edit this column and rename this to um, my build to address address um, build to address key and we will add uh, make it um, a little bit more uh, intuitive later on but for now let's rename that to build to address key and then I'll do this add another reference here where I'll drop that in there say okay it's going to rename this to address key and again I'll just edit this column here and call this ship to address key okay fantastic so that is all we needed to do to build a very basic data vault a data mart from our data vault however we want to maybe go and do a couple more things here so I'm going to go ahead over let's just say these are all now built based on type 1 dimensions but let's just have a look at our customer dimension and make some of these attributes type 2 so let's head back over here and I can do it from here straight from here so I can go in here and actually what I'll do here is let's just say my first name middle name last name and suffix um, and let's just say name style those are all type 1 you know um, I, I don't want to track history on it but let's just say my company name salesperson email address and phone those could change so what I will do here is go to about the bulk edit option here and say I want to change all of those type ones to type two so now what I have is I have a table here let me head over here and just show you the result of that if I look at my customer dim I have a table now here um, that will have oh I need to refresh my metadata okay so what I'll now have is I'll have a table here um, that will have type 1 attributes and type 2 attributes and this is uh, some referred to as a type 6 attribute I could have made all of these type 2 attributes which will be a pure type 2 dimension 
And if all of these attributes are type one, it'll be a type one dimension. And that is how you would bring in views from a staging layer or from a data vault and bring that into Bimble Flex and create your data mart layer. So now that we've created our data mart layer or the, um, the metadata for our data mart layer, let's head back over again to Bimble Studio here and go and refresh our metadata. So again, I'm going to do a couple of steps here. It's going to be manual, but um, as I said, with continuous integration and deployment, all of, everything that I'm about that I'm going to do here and right now um, through manual steps is going to be can be automated. So with the data mart, we will have a, you know, the dimensions and facts sitting over here. We'll also have the same staging tables here. Um, leave this as default, but there is options in Bimbleflex to put this into their own separate database or change the naming convention and naming pattern here. But for now, let's leave it as it is. And what we'll also see down the bottom here is we'll, we'll have the point in time table, bridge table uh, batches that we've created. And now we will have a data mart batch and we will also have the SSI packages for the, for the data mart load. Um, again, you can go and add extension points in these, but for the walkthrough, that's all it is. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go and uh, again, just for the walkthrough, I'm just going to go ahead and actually go and um, grab the table create script again, just to get the tables. Grab that and paste, push that into uh, management studio here. And this is just for me to test my build. Okay. And I'm going to head back into Google studio and hit the build button, which means is I'm now going to build everything that I need end to end for my source of staging. I've got my data vault projects there. I've got my point in time tables. I've got my bridge tables. And now I'll have my dimensions and my facts um, will be built out for me now too. All right, so I've built it and I've got an error. Now this could, uh, when you work in Pimbleflex, you will still get build errors, right? So what, what I've realized here is that in our sample metadata, we've, we've um, not had, we've not set one of the settings there. So let's go over and fix this. So this is saying to me that this row, flex row is inferred, is not in there. And this is one of our configuration settings. So let me go and have, show you just a little bit about those configuration settings here. So I'll head back into Pimbleflex, go to configurations. And how configurations work is effectively we have a set of standard configurations that we need uh, to use the Bimble Flex, and these are the keys. However, you, and it has a configuration uh, value here. These names you can change. So the default here is just so they are unique. But what it is complaining about is this row is inferred, and you can actually use them and set them up. So what we should have done here is set this one here is up to derived and save this and now go ahead and build it. So I'll go ahead back into Bimble Flex here and just go and create the objects again. So I'll go back into Bimble Studio, sorry. So I'll go back into Bimble Studio here, refresh the metadata, and it's pulling the metadata back in. And then what I will do is I'll go to generate scripts, create table scripts here. So uh, and just to get the latest with that row is inferred in, copy that and go and paste that into Management Studio again, go through the same process and run that. So I actually wanted to show you that that, that error. Um, and now what I'll do is I'll head back into Google Studio again and I'll go and build it. And hopefully this time we won't get any errors. All right, so the build is now completed and um, yeah, hopefully that's for you too. Um, and then what we'll now do is we'll head back over to Visual Studio and I'll just go ignore all here and I'll go oh, no to all there. And what we'll now do is I'll open up and just make sure that we have the demo, the data mine project Again, I'll choose the data my project here, open that up, say no there, and this will load the data my project. Okay, so now that we have this data my project here, it's got a batch and all the packages. I'm just going to briefly show you, feel free to look through around there, but I'll show you just briefly a couple of things. I'll open up the customer one here, because remember, we've defined this to be a type 6 or type 1 and type 2. If I go into this package here, you'll see down the bottom here, it actually has quite a lot of complex, a uh, lot of sort of uh, stuff here to handle type one changes, type two changes, inserts, and also obviously unaffected rows and do all the row counting. If I look at just the address dimension, which is just a type one dimension, it, you'll see that it's a lot simpler pattern here and only has the type one dimension here and will allow you the, the ability to inject any customizations logic that you need. So that really just, gets us to the end of the, the walkthrough, um, you know, you've now been able to build all the way from, you know, source to staging uh, with persistent staging. You've got your data vault layer, you've got your business data vault layer there, and you have your data mod layer.